Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to be talking about Pathfinder 2E, specifically from the perspective of considering Pathfinder as Pepsi. Uh, that this might be the, the correct view of understanding Pathfinder 2E as Pepsi to Dungeons and Dragons 5E Coke. All right, so I have to say, I am just in, uh, I'm really, really enjoying the meta of Pathfinder 2E. I'm enjoying seeing this unfold in real time and seeing how a design team designs an industry level, import, an important tabletop role playing game at the industry level. Pathfinder is important at the industry level because it belongs to the Fizzy Five, it belongs to one of the five companies that have a physical headquarters in the U.S., which is Evil Hat, Paizo, Wizards of the Coast, Fantasy Flight Games, and Monty Cook Games. Okay, those are the, and to my knowledge, those are the only five tabletop role-playing game companies that actually have a physical headquarters in the United States of America where men and women every single day go to work and build tabletop role-playing games on a full, you know, on a full-time employee basis, you know, benefits, full-time, you know, uh, a full-time job, right? That's, those are the only five companies in the U.S. that are able to do that, right? And so that, that's incredibly, to me, that, that's the industry. Like, that is, that is the heart of the industry, is understanding the importance of that, right? And so uh, Paizo is in that grouping, and I think it's really important to understand, you know, where all that lands, um, and, you know, so forth. And uh, so basically, I really have been watching Pathfinder 2E closely. So there's a whole bunch of things that, so, and on a daily basis, I find myself emotionally moved by what's happening with Pathfinder 2E, right? Uh, you know, I'll read an article in the morning, uh, you know, before my work begins, and, and I will, you know, and emotionally I'll be just uh, emanating, you know, goodwill toward, toward Paizo. And then I'll read another article in the end of the day, and I'll have disfavor for Paizo, you know, on their dis on their decisions. So, so one of the things, like, I'll give you an example of this, and this has happened in layers throughout, you know, throughout the very short period that this has even come out, right? So one of them was, um, I I was I ha I found myself upset at the way the pla the play test was starting to unfold, and the way the community has been having discussions with Paizo over the Pathfinder 2E rules, right? So I've been watching it closely. What are what are the announcements, right? Well, I'll give you some examples. Resonance. There's a new way that magic works, and how how many items you can have on yourself, and how those how those those magical items resonate with your you know with your player character, right? Uh, the game modes, right? They've been talking about encounter exploration and downtime, which I'm like, that's weird. Like, so it's like that so ex so Dungeons and Dragons 5e had you know exploration interaction and combat you know like there were different um, it was it's and I'm, I'm saying I'm like these are these are tweaks right we're going into Pathfinder 2e and every single day I was getting frustrated because I'm like they're just tweaking stuff right skills and proficiencies like well we're, we're going to deal with skills and deficiencies deaths like they've been coming out with uh how does a player character die right uh, a good example would be like if you're involved in a boss fight your recovery is going to be very difficult whereas if you're involved with a, a fight with uh two goblins your recovery will be very swift i'm like well how's that going to work is it going to be the type of damage or the amount of damage you know and but the reality is i'm looking at this i'm like this is all weeks there are there's absolutely no innovation here I mean, what what's innovation for a table if you are looking at a brand new second a brand new edition on one of the most important games in the industry how about a player can have multiple player characters right how about new dice types right that was a true innovation that got brought forward by fantasy flight games and now with genesis we are realizing that the importance of narrative dice in our industry is massive massive right uh, right now the community that's building up around Genesis is so exciting and vibrant and you know everybody looks at that game and goes I can run this and I can run this and I can run this and you know with Pathfinder 2e I, 
I'm just like, I'm like, really? You know, they're, they're saying, oh, well, every you know, everything in the game will get 40% more more HP, right? And I'm like, this is tweaks. It's nothing, right? Is there a new player type? Is there a new is there a new game participant type, right? So you have you have game master and you have player. Is there a new is there a new player participant? Is there a new game participant type that it should should exist? Or you could build that into the game right now. Is the time? And by the way, I, I mean absolutely no innovation from a technology perspective. Tabletop role playing games are tabletop role playing games. I don't need them to be video games. When I'm saying like a good example of innovation in a tabletop role playing game is actually, it's not just tweaking a rule here and there, it's changing the way the game is played at a fundamental level, right? Changing the experience for people, broadly opening the, the hobby to new groups that, that previously weren't really that, that interested in it, right? And the more I look at the Pathfinder playtest, it's just tweaks. It's going in with a small, small screwdriver and turning this, this dial just 3%, right? And that just frustrated me so much. I was just like, this is, you know, there's so much potential in this play test. And, they, and they've just bound, they've drawn these boundaries so ridiculously restrictively that it is the, nothing, this is gonna be nothing, right? And I, and I really felt that, right? Later in the day, I read another article on the play test, right? And I don't know why, you know, it was an interesting article on the play test. It was talking about, you know, a few, few aspects um, of the, uh, you know, they were talking about how they were going to deal with race or something. And then I realized, you know, this is an open play test. So they are allowing people, they're inviting people to say, hey, this is our new game and we want you involved, right? We want to hear what you have to say. So they have made a venue to hear the customers and hear people who care about the game. And that is huge. So even though they have drawn those those restrictions around it, far, far too, too you know, the, they've drawn the boundaries around the playtest. They're incredibly restrictive in my opinion. And, and the reality is when you're talking about, oh, well, our, you know, our skills are gonna be, our, our skills and proficiencies are gonna be, are gonna give, it looks a lot more like Dungeons & Dragons 5e, like where it, you either have the skill or you don't, right? But then I was like, you know, Runehammer Games wrote Index Card RPG. Index Card RPG is an amazing rule system. It doesn't even have skills. You know, that that's a major change. There's no ma absolutely no major changes in coming up in the in the Pathfinder 2E playtest. I've not seen one si single thing that would change the industry or move their market share even 5% one way or another. And 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 so here's the here's the heart of this entire video. This is why I'm talking today. What is the point of the playtest? What is the point of Pathfinder 2E? And that's where Pepsi comes in. I had said, hey, if you just tweak the game, then you're just remaking remaking D&D &D 5E, and what is the point of that? And, and, my, and the reason why I said that, and other people are saying this as well. I've seen this on Reddit, I've seen this in a few other uh, communities. EN World, right? Here's the point, here's the point. The importance of number two is bigger than anybody ever expected and more than I thought of, right? So I thought there's absolutely no point in remaking Pathfinder 2E as a 5E alternative and now Pathfinder 2E looks very similar to Pathfinder 5E with maybe a few tweaks but there's really, there's no major innovations and it's just another game that's been iterated that has a few different rules and so forth. But here's the issue. Paizo is not any other company. So if they choose to do essentially a new edition of Dungeons & Dragons 5e, and I think that's exactly where Pathfinder 2 is headed. It's just another also ran with, with, uh, with Dungeons & Dragons 5e. It's very similar to it. And, your point, like you're, and then you're like, well, what is the point of it? And here's the point, right? I don't like Pepsi. I like Coke, right? But I realize now that I step back that Pepsi is incredibly important. It is incredibly important that there is a Pepsi for every single industry, right? That there is a strong competitor that has scale and always stands as an alternative to the major big dog and not just as, but as a strong alternative. And Paizo has become a very strong company. 
their ability to create hardback books with amazing art and incredible attention to detail, right? Their games are not laughable. They're not cheap. They're not, um, they're not poorly made, right? They are, they're not an indie title. They are a big dog, big scale, professional product every time out of the gate, right? And they stand, uh, they stand, I want to say toe to toe with, with Wizards of the Coast. I really feel Wizards of the Coast is way ahead of them in many, but they are a competitor. They remain as a, as a true competitor to Wizards of the Coast, right? And some of my favorite games, like Runehammer has Index Card RPG. Um, and actually, by the way, I love Blades in the Dark, but I, that's no longer an indie game. It's made by a mainstream creator. It's made by, by Evil Hat Games. They're not a scrappy little tabletop role-playing game company. They own the Dresden property, right? Like, they own all the gaming rights for Dresden, which is like a multi-million dollar, you know, IP property, right? So, I would love to put John Harper in that, you know, cool indie niche. He's no longer indie. Like, John Harper is getting very, very, very mainstream. John Harper is taking meetings with people who are on the Dungeons and Dragons 5e, um, you know, design team. He's not a scrappy little indie creator anymore, right? Which is, which like hurts my heart a little bit. Now, it, it's awesome. I really am glad that he's starting to come up, but you know, uh, but the other one is Alan Barr over, over with Tiny Dungeon 2E. I love those games. I love Index Card RPG and I love Tiny Dungeon uh, 2E, right? And those are beautiful, brilliant, well-designed games, right? But they are indie games, and at the end of the day, when you look at their products, they really don't stand toe to toe with Wizards of the Coast. They don't; they're not ready to battle with Wizards of the Coast toe to toe. It's just they're just not there yet, right? And the reason why is they're still early in their um, uh, in their uh, journey, right, as companies, right. And but but Paizo is advanced. They they can build products. They can build them quickly. They can build them with incredible quality, right? And that's because they are the Pepsi, right? And so here's the thing, right? I don't like Pepsi. I, I get disappointed every time I have to drink it at like Applebee's or whatever. But I like Coke, right? But the reality is Coke is better for me because Pepsi exists, right? Just recently, my family's been teasing me about these hipster soda drink, sodas I drink. Coca-Cola has brought out these skinny silver cans, right? And in those cans, they have... Um, the, this new weird drink, right? It's, uh, um, lemon ginger and like they have all these really super weird flavors, right? They have, uh, lemon ginger and mango and fiery cherry and, um, you know, there's, there's these really strange, odd flavors that nobody thought Coke would make, right? Well, Coke made them because they have to stay ahead of Pepsi. Pepsi is ready to eat their lunch whenever... Whenever Coke takes a break, you know, and so Pepsi being there, being a strong competitor to Coke, makes Coke products stronger and makes the Coke that I drink consistent and good. And there's new options all the time. And, you know, and so so while I'm a, a you know, a Coke diehard, you know, I'm ride or die for Coke. Uh, when it comes to Pepsi, I have to acknowledge that they are necessary and they are healthy for the soda industry. And that's where I'm starting to, that's one of the things I, I, that I'm starting to understand by carefully watching Pathfinder 2E is I don't want them to make a D&D 5E clone. But if they make a D&D 5E clone, it, I can't dismiss that effort. And the reality and the reason why is the art on that thing is going to be amazing. The writing on it is going to be top notch. The books are going to be bound well, right? And here's the other thing that I think people don't understand enough that it's important to acknowledge, right? And this is important. When you are the biggest dog on the block, and that's what Wizards of the Coast is with Dungeons & Dragons 5e. They are the biggest game in tabletop role-playing games. Uh, basically, you make enemies. You make enemies with scale. You upset people with scale, right? When you are doing something at the highest levels of an industry, you will make enemies. You will make so many enemies, right? People who are frustrated with your project, fr product, frustrated with your design, frustrated with your, your, your word choices, frustrated with your art choices, that the people who don't like your product, when you have that much scale, that is a small market, right? 
and that, there's money in that market, right? So that there are people, and I've, re I've really, you know, and having watched Pathfinder, Paizo and Pathfinder 2E and Pathfinder for a long time, it's come to my mind and my understanding that basically there has to be a place for people to go when they're upset with the best product on the market. And that just being there, you know, being the Google Plus to the Facebook, people laugh at Google Plus and down Google Plus, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, my description of Google Plus is, do you want to talk to your smartest friends or do you want to talk to most of your friends? Because your smartest friends are on Google Plus and most of your friends are on are on Facebook, you know? And, it, and, and so, like, there, you know, people really have, you know, there are a lot of people just laugh at Google Plus and say, you're on Google Plus? Why? You know? But the reality is these, 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 these second place Pepsis, it's really important that they're there. And, and I, you know, at the end of the day, I have a little bit of beef with, uh, with Paizo because they outsold, because uh, during the 4E times, they outsold Dungeons & Dragons 4th Edition, and then publicly at the corporate level they rubbed Watsy's nose in it and I to this day I haven't forgotten that and I just really have a little bit of a beef with that company over it but looking at it in perspective and seeing all of it I understand the value that Paizo has and I, I understand the need for a Pepsi in the TRPG industry and I think that's very well my, what my, what Pathfinder 2E may become it may become the fantasy T TRPG Pepsi Pathfinder 2E Pepsi Dungeons and Dragons 5E Coke. I think that's probably where it's probably where we're gonna land. Take care.